Hello Summerlin, I'm Bear with the Summerlin Bobcast sports segment, and as we all know, last week we made some picks in the NFL and college football, we'll get to those in a second. This segment, as you can see behind me, is a shorter one, only three shows in it, so uh, that's because of our girls made it to state, so congratulations to our girls volleyball team, they did a great job, they're going to state uh, today, and they play at five against Lincoln Lutheran, uh, should be a good game. Uh, one versus the eight seed. So, of course, with all of that, we got a shortened week. A lot of people have been gone. So we won't have a special guest, but we'll just make some quick picks, and then we'll get into a really special episode next week. But that's next week. So first, let's get into our first segment of the day, which is Weekly Review. So the first segment of the day is Weekly Review. And, of course, last week I had on Kelton Broom to make some picks in the NFL and college football. So let's get into those right now. First off, on Thursday Night Football, the Bills ended up beating the Bucks 24-18. The Cowboys beat the Rams pretty easily 43-20. The Vikings beat the Packers 24-10. The Titans beat the Falcons 28-23. Uh, the Saints beat the Colts 38-27. The Dolphins beat the Patriots 31-17. The Jets barely hang on to beat the Giants, even with all the injuries and weird stuff going on in that game. They won 13-10 in overtime on a field goal. Uh, so, I mean, that's a big win for the Jets. They finally got one. Uh, the Jags beat the Steelers 20-10. to Eagles, uh, they end up kind of coming back. They were down early against the Commanders. They win 38-31. Panthers get their first win of the year against the Texans 15-13 to on a game-winning field goal. Uh, Seahawks beat the Browns 24-20. to The Broncos with the biggest upset of the week against the Chiefs. They win that 24-9. The Ravens beat the Cardinals 31-24. The Bengals beat the 49ers 31-17. The Chargers beat the Bears 30-13. And the Lions beat the Raiders 26-14. So, Kelton ended up going 11-5, and, and I went 13-3. and three, So, actually a really good week for both of us. Some of the best records, like, all year. Uh, so, I'll definitely take that. Three, three picks wrong. That's probably the best I've done in a while. Uh, and college football went pretty good as well for both of us. Uh, number four, Florida State beat Wake Forest 41-16. to Kansas ended up upsetting number six, Oklahoma, in a huge game. They won that 38-33. to Number 10, Penn State beat Indiana 33-24. Northwestern beat Maryland 33-27. Number eight, Oregon handled uh, number 13, Utah, pretty easily 35-6. to uh, Number 18, Louisville shut out number 20, Duke 23-0. to Riley Leonard did play for Duke. Um, their quarterback, and they still got shut out. Uh, he was injured, though. It's a whole thing, but Duke did not look good. Minnesota beat Michigan State 27-12, and that one, of course, Nebraska plays Michigan State this weekend. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit later, though. Number 21, Tennessee beat Kentucky 33-27. Number 3, Ohio State beat Wisconsin 24-10, and Nebraska beat Purdue 31-14. Me and Kelton both went 7-3, and three, uh, so a good set of weeks there overall, right? I only got six wrong, Kelton only got eight wrong, so a good week from everybody there. We'll move on to our second segment of the day, which is Husker Hour. So this is Husker Hour, and we're going to take a little bit of a look into the Michigan State-Nebraska game this weekend, based off of like offensive ranks, defensive ranks, uh, time of possession, that sort of stuff, and then we'll look at the rest of the schedule, some of the injury news, stuff like that. So let's start off with the stats here for the offenses. Scoring-wise, offensively, Michigan State ranks 91st, Nebraska ranks 102nd in offensive scoring, which is really bad. We know both offenses are not good. Um, Nebraska can at least run the ball, as we'll see in this next one, but scoring has just been really rough for both teams. Rushing-wise, uh, Michigan State ranks 115th nationally. Nebraska's 26th, so again, the run is a better part for Nebraska, but they still have not been able to score as much as they would definitely like, and as we talked about Michigan State, their offense and their whole team really has been pretty rough. Uh, it should be a good win for Nebraska. They should get bowl eligible, but all these are shoulds, right? We need them to be like, for sure, they're going to happen. I think they will, but let's keep going here. Uh, passing stats, Michigan State ranks 87th nationally. Nebraska's 130th in the pass. That is... um. I don't even know what to say. That's abysmal, really. What is there, like 132 teams? Yeah, I mean, like, that's that's really bad for Nebraska. Uh, yeah, so I don't even want to talk about it, really. Total offense, Michigan State's 113, Nebraska's 112, so pretty evenly ranked. Obviously, Nebraska's rushing is really carrying those overall yardage stats, right, the scoring stats. But 
Uh, you'd hope that maybe they can get going this week against Michigan State. You would think they'd get going this weekend versus Michigan State. But I guess we'll see. Defensively, this is where Nebraska has the big edge. So scoring defense, Michigan State ranks 84th, with, which is, I mean, respectful, right? Scoring defense, that's fine. Nebraska's 21st now. Um, of course, you know, we saw the kick return or the blocked field goal return by Quinn Newsom. Uh, that puts us at 21st. Rush defense is obviously Nebraska's major strong point. 44th for Michigan State, which, again, respectful. Nebraska's number six in the nation. I don't remember. I looked. It was like the first time in like five years Nebraska was top ten in like rush defense nationally, which is kind of crazy to think about. Uh, so, yeah, Nebraska at six rush defense. The better in the past is well, Michigan State's 76. Nebraska is 59th in the nation, which um, Iowa, if you look at Iowa and Wisconsin and Maryland, all their defenses, like a lot of the Big Ten defenses are anywhere from like 20 to like 40. So yeah, if you look at all those Michigan State stats compared to Nebraska stats, um, it's pretty, it's, well, I wouldn't say it's, obviously it's like the offense is kind of even overall, but the defense is like some, like the offense, right? They're ranked 113, 112 total. The defense, Michigan State is 55, Nebraska is 13. So you would think Nebraska would be able to hold them and hopefully their offense puts up enough points to handle that, right? Overall time of possession, Michigan State is 110, Nebraska is 40, so we've been able to obviously running the ball more, we've hung on to the ball more, our defense has had more stops, which you know gives us the ball more. So a good job um, overall by Nebraska and Matt Rule's staff to turn this team around. Record-wise, of course, we're 5-3 and three now with the win last weekend, and we're 5-1 and one with Harburg as the starter, which that information, I mean, plus Jeff Sims had the fumble when he came in, which in my opinion, I don't think it was Jeff Sims' fault, but... Uh, rough situation, rough circumstances. Um, but yeah, Harburg, he's going to be stuck with. Hopefully he doesn't get injured. We already saw him have to come out of game. Um, maybe Chelo Purdy comes in because I don't think staff for anybody in Lincoln has any trust in Jeff Sims right now, which sucks because I actually like him a lot. But, I mean, Harburg, he's got to start sliding or at least start running like he was in the beginning of the season because now you can see they probably told him you got to be more careful so he's not running as hard, but he's still taking the same hits. He's just not getting as much yards. So it's it's a rough thing, right? You gotta he's gotta start sliding because we can't lose him. We lose him, we lose everything. We've already had enough injuries, plenty of injuries. We don't even need to talk about injuries, but I mean, so yeah, we, we I mean one more win, we're bowl eligible, right? Everybody right now calls it a success anyways. You get bowl eligible and I still think two of the next four games are winnable. We easily could go seven and five and then from there it's like straight up people are talking about bowl projections like I've heard possibly Vegas um, I've heard Florida, I've heard New York, uh, there's a lot of, I've heard Nashville, that, that would be an interesting one to go to. So yeah, uh, the upcoming schedule here, of course, we're at Michigan State, then we play Maryland at home, we go to Wisconsin, then we're back home, uh, of course, Black Friday, like it always is, against Iowa. So very winnable games all around, we could win the West, so it's time to start talking about that, have to play like a Michigan or an Ohio State, whoever ends up winning the East, uh, which, yeah, I mean, we don't want to, it's not about winning the Big Ten, it's about making a bowl, and then maybe making, you know, the Big Ten Championship, but just winning the West. Obviously, I think the bowl game is more important, but, I mean, yeah. So, let's get into our final segment of the day, which is going to be game time. So, this is game time, and as you can see, I'm here by myself. Um, I, as I said before, State Volleyball, congrats to them, but it did get us, you know, a day off on Friday. We get out early today. So it's, you know, it's a, it's a really nice thing. Um, obviously, go support them. But nobody's here to be a guest. Uh, you know, I was gone yesterday. So we're just going to go ahead and do these picks uh, solo, see how I do. In the NFL, we got the Titans and the Steelers. I'm going to take Derrick Henry on the road. They play, play tonight because that's Thursday Night Football. I'll take the Titans winning that one. Dolphins playing the Chiefs, and I believe they're playing Germany, which is kind of crazy to think about. That's going to be a shootout. Uh, Patrick Mahomes played like he did uh, last weekend, the Chiefs will get killed. I think it'll be a good game. I think it'll be a shootout, like I said. Possibly 40-plus points scored on both sides. It's going to be a good game. It'd be a great one to go to if you're an NFL fan that couldn't make it to the States. That would be one you'd want to go to. I'm going to take the Dolphins on the road, though. Well, not on the road, but technically they're the away team. So the Dolphins, I think, win it. They've played really good, plus the Chiefs' defense is not excellent. I know the Dolphins' defense isn't excellent either, but I think the Dolphins win. So that'll be a good game to watch. Vikings playing the Falcons. That is a tough game because, of course, the Vikings uh, finally looked like they were picking up some steam. 
and then Kirk Cousins, here's his AC, is Achilles. Uh, they trade for Josh Dobbs, so now he's the starter in Minnesota. I think the Vikings win. I don't think the Falcons are good enough, and the Vikings keep winning. Cardinals playing the Browns. I'll take the Cardinals. Rams playing the Packers. I'm going to take the Rams to win that on the road. Uh, Commanders playing the Patriots. I'll take the Patriots. Bears playing the Saints. Uh, I'm going to take Alvin Kamara and the Saints. They've actually looked pretty good recently, so give me New Orleans to win that one. The Bears just don't look good at all. Seahawks-Ravens, I think, is supposedly like America's game of the week. Um, I'm going to take, obviously, my Hawks, but I think this will be a really good game. Uh, Lamar Jackson will probably go crazy against the Seahawks defense, but the Ravens defense isn't great either. Um, hopefully, you know, they get DK Metcalf going. He started off slow. I think the Hawks win it, though, on the road. Bucks playing the Texans. I'm going to take the Texans to get a big win at home. So give me Houston and C.J. Stroud, who, again, we talked about earlier in the year. He's playing really good. Colts and the Panthers. Hmm. Nah, I, I got to go Colts. I don't think the Panthers went back-to-back. -back. I didn't think they were going to win a game this year. They won last week. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be it for them. Colts win. Giants, Raiders. I think Raiders easily. The Giants are just, man, if I was a Giants fan, I would not watch football because that's just sad. Cowboys, Eagles, uh, good old NFC East matchup. I'm taking the Eagles at home, though. I think they should win that one. I don't think handily because the Cowboys' defense will keep them in it, but the Eagles should win. Bengals, uh, Bills, Sunday Night Football. That'll be a good game, but I'm going to take the Bills in that one. Uh, and that, like I said, it'll be a good game, but I think Josh Allen carries them. Josh Allen's a better quarterback than Joe Burrow, and the Bills' offense will look better than the Bengals' offense. So give me the Bills. Chargers, Jets on Monday Night Football is kind of a rough game. I'm going to take the Chargers in a big win by, like, 17 or more. I don't think the Jets offense can hold up. We're going to go to college football here, and there's a lot of good games this weekend. Uh, the first one, not necessarily a great game, but it's number three, Ohio State playing Rutgers. I think Ohio State kills. Ohio State is probably one of the best teams in the country behind Georgia and Michigan, so I'm going to take Ohio State to win that. Number 25, Kansas State playing number seven, Texas. It's a good ranked matchup in the Big 12, but I'm going to take Texas. They're at home and they're a better team. Uh, Texas A&M playing Ole Miss. Ole Miss finally ranked 11th now. They kind of got a little bit more love. I'm going to take Ole Miss. Uh, they're at home. Lane Kiffin's got his squad looking really good. So, yeah, give me Ole Miss by, like, 17 points. Number 12, Notre Dame playing Clemson. I'm taking Notre Dame. I saw some random picks that a lot of people were taking Clemson. I really don't know how because Clemson is actually worse than Nebraska. They're 4-4. Four and four. Uh, So, I, it's like, I don't know how you could take. I think Notre Dame looks actually really good this year. Uh, obviously, they got beat. They had a rough one against Ohio State. But I think Notre Dame wins pretty easily in that one. I don't know why people are picking Clemson so much. Number 14, Missouri. Number one, Georgia. This is another one that everybody's like, watch out. Georgia's on upset watch. No, they're not. Georgia rolls. Georgia wins by three touchdowns or more. They're at home. I know Brock Bowers is out, but that offense is so good. Carson Beck has led them. And, yeah, Missouri's a good team this year. And the SEC is stacked. But Georgia wins handily. I've seen a lot of upset picks as that's their upset game. I don't know. I don't know how you could take that. Number nine, Penn State, Maryland. Penn State rolls. Uh, Maryland just lost to Northwestern. Uh, Maryland's got to play Nebraska coming up. So I'm, I'm taking Penn State in an easy one there. Number 10, Oklahoma versus Oklahoma State. I'm picking this game. Upset. Oklahoma State wins because Oklahoma has looked so rough recently. And I don't, you know, Oklahoma just lost. And they only fell four spots, which I guess Kansas is a considerable team, whatever. But... Oklahoma loses back-to-back -back against unranked opponents, and their college football hopes are gone. Um, they won't make it, even though I thought maybe they were a dark horse. Uh, that team just looked really bad last week, and I think Oklahoma State has what it takes to pull the upset, so that's my upset of the week. Number five, Washington, playing somehow still ranked number 24, USC. I'm going to take Washington pretty handily. Probably the Heisman on their team, Michael Penix, which everybody thought Caleb Williams coming in, but he's played bad. I'm just going to be completely honest. Uh, USC hasn't looked good. I don't know how they're still ranked. They barely won last week. Give me Washington. I know USC's at home. I'm going to take Washington by like 10 points. I think it'll be a closer game because Caleb Williams will keep a minute. But yeah, I'll, I'll take Washington. Number 13, LSU playing number 8, Bama. This is going to be a really good game. Um, I'm guessing that's the one Kirk Herbstreit will call. It's the night game on ESPN or ABC, however you watch it. I'm taking Bama at home. People said both these teams were done, right? Last year, they didn't look great. The start of this year, they didn't look great, but both of them ranked inside the top 15. Uh, I mean, whoever wins this keeps their hopes alive for the college football playoffs, keeps their hopes alive to win the SEC, uh, which, as I said before, is stacked. Obviously, you got to go through Georgia, but to win their side, I'm taking Bama. Um, 
I think Nick Saban's done a good job to keep his team focused, and I think they win it by, I'm going to say, seven points. It's going to be a good game. Definitely watching that one. Finally, of course, we got the game of the week, if you're a Husker football fan, that is. Nebraska playing Michigan State. This one should be a – I'm not – no, okay, I won't go there. I'm going to say Nebraska wins. I can't use the word. I was going to say handily, but I, it's just – I haven't, that hasn't been proven yet. I love Matt Rule. I love everything, you know, watching the videos that he makes. Not he, but, you know, that the team makes now that GBR rewinds. Um, those are great. Gets you hyped up, gets you pumped. Um, I think Nebraska wins. They got to go on the road to East Lansing, but Michigan State, they've had just a whole roller coaster down all year. And so, I mean, it's, I think Nebraska wins good. I think they get a bowl game. Matt Rule goes crazy. Uh, Lincoln goes crazy. We get to host Maryland. You go to seven and five. It's just a lot of things you can look forward to. Hopefully, we play well. We got to win this one first. Get bowl eligible. That's great. That's step one. Keep winning because this team is really turning around, you know, starting 0 2 and now possibly getting the six wins and possibly winning the West, right? I mean, it's all in our hands, so I think we can do it. Thank you guys for tuning in this week. We'll see you next week.